how are we to deal with the monotony of the COVID-19 situation of this sort of impending experience of Groundhog Day? Same thing over and over and over and over. No outcome, no finish line in sight. It's helpful to bring the broad perspective into this and remind yourself that for the first time in history, for most people alive born after World War II, we have never experienced anything like this before. No sort of global pause in affairs, a complete uprooting of our daily life, our daily experience. So just remembering that this is new, that we don't have the experience really to draw from in, in navigating these difficult or this difficult time. To help understand this a bit more, what's going on in our day-to-day, moment-to-moment experience, there's a great term called teleoanticipation. And it's from a German psychologist named Hans Volkart Ulmer, who coined it after studying high-performance endurance athletes. Now, how this relates to the pandemic is basically this. When we hide finish lines from athletes, endurance, long distance endurance athletes, they're more, they are more likely to focus on the present moment and increase their performance as they're going along. Whenever we are dreaming of a finish line in the pandemic or an end to it that isn't here, their advice would basically be stop waiting, wishing, expecting a finish line to come. Focus on the present, and that will be your best guide. Now, I know that sometimes sounds ridiculous and it's almost irritating, but we know it to be true. This idea of pulling our attention or our focus away from a perceived or desired finish line can be counterintuitive, really, because much of our life is based around deadlines, endpoints, such as a work project or a school project or a hockey game for all that matters, really. It's important just to recognize that that is how we're normally attuned to our daily experience. And in the pandemic, that orientation to a desired finish line or a thought outcome is really draining and taxing and quite difficult to deal with. So when we sit in anticipation, in expectation, add on this idea of this judgment, it should be like this, it should have been like this, I should have done that, the government should have done that, whatever you want to kind of throw on top of that in terms of our judgment of this reality, that can be incredibly exhausting. So see if you can let go of that a little bit, 10, 20, 30 times a day, maybe less, however many times you need to remind yourself of these things. It's a practice. There's no finish line. I heard a really well-respected psychologist, medical doctor. uh, He has expertise in epidemiology as well. He said, it's unlikely that anything well, that our lives will return to pre-COVID normalcy until 2024. At first, that can be really annoying. And at the same time, it can also be a bit comforting because then it helps, at least it helps me let go of my habitual thought pattern that it should be different, it should end soon, why can't it end soon, and so on and so forth. So see you in 2024. That's the broad perspective. Let's go a little bit more micro. The first suggestion I have is to focus on what you can control. Easier said than done, as they always say, but it's really important. This can be simple as in you're not going to watch too much news, you're not going to read too much about everything that's going on. You have, you have agency there. You have agency over many different choices in your life. But getting really clear on 
when you get lost in a desired perceived outcome that's not what it is in front of you, can you use this sense of what can you control in this moment? And if you can act on that, that's super wonderful. There's a wonderful prayer or mantra that's been popularized in the mindfulness community, but really it comes from the addiction recovery community. And it goes like this, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Put that on a sticky note on your monitor. I promise you it will help. Okay, the second thing I want to focus on in terms of dealing with this COVID monotony is the idea of the thinking mind, or you could even use the, the idea of the egoic mind. We covered this in the presentation, but I want to return to it because it's probably the most important thing you will ever need to know about how your own mind functions. This thinking mind, this part of our mind that is never content in the present moment, it's orientation is comparison or judgment, good, bad, right, wrong. Um, it's often dwelling on the past. So I should have done this differently. Or oh, if the government had only done this, then we wouldn't be in this COVID situation right now. Or whatever the story is. So it's past, dwells on the past. It also projects into the future. So it's past and future oriented. If this happens, then I'll be okay. That goes back to the previous point around finish lines. It's never happy with the present moment. So on the other side, the observing mind, that is our ticket in some sense or pathway to loosen the grip of this thinking mind, this obsessiveness and we can let go a little bit and live in this more observing quality. This observing quality isn't, it can be a bit hard to hold. And so it's more just a way of paying attention to the present moment on purpose, non-judgmentally. That's really a definition of mindfulness. And mindfulness, I think, is the best way, or practicing meditation is the best way to cultivate this quality of the observing mind. It allows us to let go again of these thought patterns or just to notice that they're happening and that we're getting constricted. And just in the noticing, there's soothing, there's relief there. Okay, I'm gonna read something from Christian Neff and Chris Germer, um, pioneers of the self-compassion practices about how this thinking mind, observing mind, impacts us on a daily basis, I think it can be really helpful. So while it's easy to be mindful for a moment or two, it is difficult to ma maintain that state of mind, that uh, observing mind, because it goes against our natural tendencies of the brain. Neuroscientists have identified an interconnected network of brain regions that is active when the mind is at rest and inactive when the mind is engaged in a task. It's called the default mode network. The default mode network includes structures located right down the midline of the brain from front to back. Those parts become highly active when nothing in particular is capturing our attention. So the mind inevitably wanders. The default mode network does three basic things. One, it creates a sense of self. Two, it projects that self into the past or into the future. And three, it looks for problems. Sound like this thinking machine, this sort of egoic structured me, you, good, bad? I think so. So back to the, to the reading. For instance, have you ever had the experience of sitting down to a meal and before you knew it, the entire plate of food was gone. Where was your mind? While your body was eating, your mind was elsewhere, lost in the default mode network. The brain uses its spare time 
to focus on potential problems that need solving. This is beneficial from an evolutionary point of view, so we can anticipate threats to our survival. But in contemporary society, it's a rather unpleasant way to live. I'll continue. Research shows that one of the benefits of practicing mindfulness regularly is that it tends to deactivate the default mode network, both while meditating and during normal activities. This means that the more we practice being mindful, the more opportunities we have to make better choices for ourselves, including the choice to practice self-compassion. Hey, that being said, so when we can notice when we're getting lost and bring ourselves back to the present, we're going to make better choices. We're going to feel better. We're not going to get lost in the monotony of this COVID madness as much as we might otherwise. The last thing uh, I'll add is see if you can practice a new hobby. See, or maybe you have an old hobby that you haven't been engaged with much lately, and, and maybe now is the time to re-engage with that. Maybe you want to create a games night with your friends online or with your kids. I don't know. I mean, sometimes it sounds silly because it's annoying that this is the reality. And at the same time, it can actually be a really pleasant, joyful experience. I have some other tips, but I'm going to put those in the uh, video for question number two. So remember, big picture, things are difficult. That's the reality. Let's, let's stop focusing on a desired, perceived, imagined finish line. And let's return to the present moment. Focus on what you can control. Notice the obsessive, compulsive thinking mind. Notice its habits. See if you can practice being present. I encourage you to try meditation. If you do pr practice meditation, amazing. Keep it going. I know it's not for everybody, but at the same time, it can be for everybody. Um, and come up with some new hobbies or get into an old hobby, get into an old practice. At the beginning of COVID, I built a shed out of recycled wood in my backyard. You can see it a little bit here. There's no wood on that part. I'm not a carpenter but I have enough two cents that I could put it together. I could figure out what to do. And that gave me some sense of tranquility in the midst of the lockdown. That was sort of in the very beginning of everybody being locked in their homes, but just do something, do something out of the ordinary, break your routines, and that will be really helpful. Okay, I hope that was meaningful, that was helpful. I'll put the links to the, um, research or, or the article about the, oh, what's it called? Tilio anticipation. And I'll also link to uh, Germer and Neff, the self-compassion pioneers. Okay, take it easy, bye.